I'm unable to grieve as a normal mother should be able to. Full of smiles, a joy to be around. But early this year, the smiles began to fade. We watched her go from a laughing, mischievous, dancing, singing little child to a very withdrawn, very timid. Her eyes were dull. She would look at us like, can't you help me? Her step-grandmother says the injury started showing up in January when Kelsey's biological father picked her up for visitation. That's when he first noticed something was wrong. When he brought her in, she had a brace on her little. And I asked what happened, and he said that he had been told by the mother that she had fallen out of the bed and broken her collarbone. These pictures, taken as late as August, show Kelsey with a blood-red eye. On the left cheek of her face, black bruises. There are bruises on her forehead and nose, and more bruises on one of her arms. This picture shows Kelsey in cast after suffering two broken legs. I just talked with some of the family members of two-and-a-half-year-old Kelsey Briggs. They are understandably upset. Meanwhile, as you mentioned, this is still very much an investigation into how this little girl died. Meanwhile, family and friends close to the case have revealed their own evidence. Terry Sigmund has a stack of files all pleading for help. I was very concerned about Kelsey and that if they didn't do something or find out if it was rule out that it was medical or whatever, that Kelsey wasn't going to be here in a couple of months. And that was in August. And it's been a couple of months and she's not here. She thinks Kelsey Briggs was abused, documenting various injuries, including bruises on the two-year-old's face, a broken nose, broken collarbone, and two broken legs she says were not normal childhood injuries. They were spiral breaks, and when uh, we asked what, what a spiral break was, he, they said he basically just held his hands up and said it's like this. Somebody has done this. She doesn't know who caused the injuries, but has suspicions. The abuse did not start till January. And uh, that's when her stepfather came into her life. I'm not saying he did it, but somebody heard her. For more than a year, she sat silent while her daughter became a household name. Radon Smith is Kelsey Briggs' mother, the two-year-old girl abused to death in Meeker last year. Well, since then, Kelsey Briggs has become a poster child for several abuse prevention groups. Even the legislature joined in by passing Kelsey's law that gives DHS more authority in child abuse cases. But in all those incidences, no one ever contacted, ever consulted the one person who knew Kelsey best. It's awful. It's horrible. I, I wouldn't want anyone to walk in these shoes. Radon Smith could go to prison soon. The state charges she knew or should have known about Kelsey's abuse, and those charges have essentially cut her out of the loop. It's like I've just been pushed to the side, like Kelsey didn't even have a mom, and that's not right. And I wish I would have been, you know, 
contacted with that stuff. Whatever people's intentions are, Radon sees them as exploiting her daughter's death for personal or political agendas. It really hurts because she's being used as a symbol and she's being used for people to, people's personal gain. And I don't see that that's right. Like the Kelsey's Law, you know, I believe that that was put together for people's personal gain, that they, lawmakers signed it, you know, to have their name put on something that was, you know, in Kelsey's, you know, because it, they were attached to Kelsey's name. So then that gets them, maybe that gets them another vote. But Radon says that is just part of a bigger problem. Losing a child is difficult enough. Losing a child publicly is almost unbearable. Just like going, trying to go to Kelsey's grave. I mean, I constantly have to think about, you know, worrying if somebody's, you know, going to come up there and I don't have the time to just sit there and talk to her like I want to. She says this, coupled with the merciless judgment of a voyeuristic public, makes her daily life miserable. I lost my best friend. And it's like no one understands that. And that's what I continue to tell people. It's amazed me how hard people kick you when you're at your lowest.